Hello, everyone. Um, the next talk is uh, what are your users Kube controlling into your Kubernetes cluster by Julio Garcia. Welcome. OK, thank you. OK, a lot of people today. Uh, sorry about my accent first, and then let's try to make this quick and something interesting. Uh, the idea is to tell you a little bit how we uh, use Falco to detect what your users are, uh, are using in QCTL in your Kubernetes cluster. Okay? So first of all, let me introduce a little bit what is Falco. Uh, Falco is a behavioral activity monitor that allows you to dis uh, detect suspicious activity uh, based on a set of rules that you can write. Okay? Uh, we do that using uh, tapping in the kernel med mo module and listening to the syscalls there. And, and filtering that with powerful expressions. We have full support for uh, adding context to that syscall from the orchestrator and for the containers and process of the, of the system. And we have a system for uh, notification, really flexible, that you can output that notifications out to the standard log, to the syslog, to webhooks, with, uh, to whatever you want. Okay? And Falco is open source, of course. Uh, we recently changed to a Apache license. Uh, but it was open source from the beginning. And we are really uh, willing that everybody helps us to build a, a better, write better rules uh, or make improvement for the tool, okay? Another thing that we are really excited about is that uh, Falco has recently uh, joined the Cloud Native Comp uh, Computing Foundation, uh, the sandbox level project, but the idea is to bring it up and, and make it a, a more mature uh, tool there. Uh, the idea is to improve the runtime security for cloud native platforms right now, trying to detect a normal behavior there in containers, in host, and, and, and auditing the orchestrator's uh, activity. Okay. A quick example of how uh, Falco works. Uh, in the upper part, you have Falco running. In the lower part, there are uh, we are doing bad things in a container. We are executing, uh, executing it. Uh, we are uh, touching sensitive files. We are trying to copy the shadow file, the password file. We are trying to modify files under the binary folder. And all of this is being notified by Falco in the upper part, as you can see. Okay? So this is the normal uh, use of Falco right now. A little bit talk about the uh, internal architecture right now to explain how we improve this and, and modify it to allow the, the auditing of the orchestrator events. Okay? Uh, what Falco does internally in the architecture is that it, it tap in the system stream in the event system event uh, string calls. Okay? Take that system call and take it to the user space. Add more information about the process, the Docker container where it's running, the orchestrator and generate an event call object. That event call object goes through the RAL engine that has a lot of Falco rules configured by the user and try to match, 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 match the Falco rules against the event call, event object call, and if there is a match, uh, uh, then goes to the output and notify in whatever means you have configured Falco to do, to do that, okay? How is a Falco rule? I don't know if you see it well, I think so. Uh, so uh, for example, this is a simple rule that uh, notifies you if, you if somebody tries to write below the uh, binary bit, okay? So as you can see, uh, we have the condition where we go to the, the RAL engine goes to the system call event and check the event type of the system, the, the, the system call, and if it's on open, uh, goes, goes ahead with the condition checking, checks the directory that is being executed that open call, uh, and then if there is a match, goes to the output and gets some more information from the, uh, from the event to uh, give more information in the output of the Falco rule. For example, the username that, tried, that has tried to execute that, the, the command line that, that was, execute, was executed, and the, uh, the binary that was uh, targeted. Okay? So with this in mind, the idea was to try to reuse all these for doing the same with the audit events. So we want to reuse the, the conditions, the, web, the, field, the expressions that we have there, the output, even the YAMLs where we write the rules. Okay? So let's see how we did that. First of all, let's talk a little bit about 
uh, the Kubernetes uh, audit events. This is, a, this is a thing that is only from Kubernetes, nothing to do with Falco. It was added in uh, 1.11 and provides a, chronolo a chronological set of records that documents the change in a cluster. Okay? Each record is a JSON object and you have to enable this. It doesn't come enabled by default and you can uh, select what do you want to be notified about. You can, be, you can say, oh, yeah, I, only, I only want to be notified about deletes, I only want to be notified about modifications uh, or about creates or, or whatever. And then all that can, can go to a log backend that can be a log or a webhook. In Falco we configure a webhook for, for that mean. So this is the this is a a Kubernetes audit event, a JSON. Uh, it was simplified a little bit because there is even more stuff there. But this is to, that, so you can see more or less what kind of information came from the from the Kubernetes to to the tool that you configure to about the audit events. You can see that we have the birth. That in this case was a delete. The user that executed that delete the status or the timestamp where this was secured and unique ID, for example, and even then in the annotations we have the authorization that allow this execution and, and that stuff. So a lot of information to, to, to be filtered and to be used for, for detecting things. How do we integrate this with, with Falco? First of all, we create an, an embedded web server inside, the, inside Falco and make them uh, and prepare it to listen only for posts uh, request a, a simple HTTP, HTTP. Then we configure the Kubernetes audit event, the policy, and, the, uh, and a webhook directly to the embedded web server. So whenever a, a new uh, Kubernetes audit event was generated, was posted to the uh, embedded web server, and there uh, it was parsed and added a, a little bit more information and inserted in the rule engine like the Cisco events were. Okay, this runs in parallel and with another set of, fal of Falco rules, but we have there running the two systems at the same time and the outputs are the same. A little bit more information about how they do that. Uh, we create a generic event interface, so we have the common parts in, in one of the objects. We create a, we create an, a Kubernetes audit event object and, and then we insert it directly the, the, the JSON object. Uh, and create uh, the JSON pointers to extract values from there. Okay? So the idea is that we have, in that event, we have all the information that the Kubernetes has passed, at, passed us and we can work with it. And now another thing that we have to do is to identify the Falco rules. So some of them are only for the syscalls and another one are for the Kubernetes audit events because they are different. Okay? So we have a new, a new uh, property to the Falco rules that is the source. Talking a little bit more about the JSON pointers, it's a really easy way if you know XPath. It's a really easy way to uh, navigate a, a JSON and go and check different values inside it. Uh, so we can, the idea of, of doing it so easy is that you can write that in the Falco rules uh, whenever you are writing and preparing one of the custom tools that you want to write. For example, a more complex example of the JSON pointers using directly one of the Audit, uh, Kubernetes audit events. Uh, as you can see, it's really easy. You can access the verb, you can access inside two, two levels or more, or, or even arise or, or whatever. So, uh, the syntax a little bit when you are using and uh, writing the Kubernetes rules allows you to use any JSON pointer to access any part of the JSON of the Kubernetes audit event. We have created some macros to facilitate the access, so for example, the verb, the username, the target resource. Can be, can be accessed easily. And you can see all this writing the last, the last command for Falco that is the same like, like Falco does, does help. For, so Falco does, does list equals Kubernetes audit gives you all this information directly from the command line. A little bit more of uh, a Falco rule more complex and, and complete direct, uh, prepared for the Kubernetes uh, audit events. Here we have a rule that allows us to uh, notify a warning about some config map that contains the word password or AWS access key or AWS is three access key. So whenever some user will, will create a config map with some sensitive data, we will be notified. Okay? Uh, talking a little bit more about the Falco rules, as you can see, we have macros that we can use and list. Okay? And 
And in this case, uh, in this case, for example, you can, we can start. We start with a macro for uh, detecting that the config map has that private credentials. Okay, here in, we can can be much more complex, but with this probably is enough. Uh, we have another macro for, to check in if this is a config map, and another one to check that we are doing a modify over that config map. Okay, and in the condition, as you can see, we try to check the three of them, and whenever we check uh, that the three of them has been uh, fulfilled, we go to the output and we check, uh, for example, uh, and we return to the user that is checking the Falco rules, for example, the username that tried to do that, uh, and what the config map that he was trying to create, okay? And a little bit of demo now. I'm going to show you a little bit how this works in real life, if nothing is broken. Uh, here I should have I have Falco running, okay, in a Minikube, uh, connected to a Minikube cluster, a small Minikube cluster, and here I'm going to try to execute some, some things. Uh, let me show you first what I'm going to try to create. For example, I'm going to try to create a simple config map with my secret key, my access key for AWS here. Uh, uh, let me then try to do that. Uh, Okay, and as you can see here, I have been notified about uh, that a config map has been created. And this will be working better. Let me try to check demo effect. This will have to be more information there. Okay, because I am stupid and I do not write correctly. Now yes, now yes, okay, sorry. Okay, here we have the warning about the config map that we, uh, the config map with a private credential was created, as you can see. We have the information about the user that tried to create that, the config map, all the information about the config map, and, and everything, okay? So more things, more interesting things that we can detect with Falco. Uh, for example, let me create a normal deployment for engines. This is really, something really easy as you can see here with uh, Nginx and everything. We are notified about the, the deployment has been created, nothing special, but now if I try to, uh, let me do this, if I try to exec in the pod, in the Nginx deployment pod, uh, sorry. Uh, What I wrote. Ah, okay. Because I don't have. Okay, but I was okay. Then he notified me that I tried, but I didn't correctly succeed because the image was not pulled because I don't have internet connection now, probably. So, but yeah, but you, as you can see, uh, I was. I was notified anyway because I tried and, and, the, and the execution was done, uh, even if it was not successful. So there, yeah. connection. Okay, more things. Uh, for example, if you, I can create, uh, I create a service account. This is usually normally a, a problem, and, and you try to bin to bin that uh, service account to the cluster admin to get a escalation of privilege or, or whatever. And you are notified about that, about that. There was a cluster role binding to cluster admin about that, and, and you can then act about this and or, or warn that user or, or react about that. Another one, for example, is that uh, okay, this is an overlay uh, uh, a really permissive uh, cluster role. Uh, create that I have here that allow us to access any resource and with uh, and, and create then a cluster role binding for my user. Okay, so let me create this. Okay, and now we should see here 
that the, there is a warning here about the that a cluster role was created with a Google card. So we can check something so so special about it, like uh, or too much permissions to execute things or, or things like that. Uh, and, but the, and at the end, for example, another uh, example about the cluster roles is like this pod exec. Uh, this pod exec uh, permission, for example, you can uh, also notify out about something some, some more specific. Like if you try to give uh, pod execution permissions to a cluster role, you have you you, you are notified too about it. Yeah, like, like, like you see here, okay? <coughs> so, let me return now to the... So, nothing more specific. We have here, you have here all the, all the links about the website. Uh, we have a public Slack for SysDig. There is no specific uh, Slack yet for Falco, but you can join there, and there is a, a channel specific for Falco where people do questions, and, and there are several developers from the tool there that can answer probably better than me. We have some blog posts about it, explaining how it works, and, uh, and now you can, you can join us in the GitHub repo to, to help improve this and, and write more rules. And that's all. Questions? The notifications you showed were just log messages running in Falco. Do you have ways of exporting it out to other? Yeah, we, you can you can configure that uh, in the Falco repo. Explains there are several possibilities. You can uh, send that to a webhook and then react to that, or you can send that to and notify a serverless uh, a serverless function and then react based on that. Uh, whatever you want build on top of that is is really easy. Uh, we are going to be in Gantt next week doing a workshop and we will be showing how to do that exactly and how to with kubeles i think miguel is over there so we will be doing that uh, wednesday afternoon in in Gant in after config management but it's, it's easy to do more extend better that notification channel and send it to slack or to whatever place you want any other questions uh, so as I understand, CSD, uh, Falco uses SysDig under the hood, yeah? yeah. And SysDig recently introduced support of eBPF, so now we don't need to uh, add yep. the kernel module, right? Is it like production ready? Is it no, stable already? No, not yet. I think so it's, we in are, it's in alpha. It's yeah. in alpha right now. We are testing okay. it internally, uh, but we, it didn't reach even QA yet. It's, uh, it's the developers are testing it, but we didn't have the time to, to the, test it properly yet. Mm -hmm. But it's in the works, and probably it will be, I think it's for this year. For this okay. year, it should be ready. Okay, thanks. So it's not ready. Sorry. Other questions? Thank you. So, thank you. See you.